Uh, this is the first meeting of the new 1973-74 IT program. Um, the program uh, officially starts right now. The next six, I mean five months, you are, if you're going to join this program, are going to be in a race, a five-week race. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, five-month race, in 1 Corinthians 9, I therefore so run. You and I know if we've got anything in our heads at all, that probably the greatest problem in the church is we've stopped running. And you know that after the church stops running, then after a while it stops walking, and this is what you've got, a sleeping church. And so we are going to try to, in our own lives, break through all this inertia. One great man of God once said, the greatest problem we all have is inertia. Now, I realize some of you, many of you, English is not your first language. So once in a while, I'll try to define terms. Inertia is that which holds you on the earth. If a rocket has to go into space, the biggest problem is to get away from the earth. And there's the law of gravity that creates inertia. And the physicists would probably tell us many other factors as well. Um, I think right from the beginning we have to admit this kind of program has weaknesses. And it is no guarantee for spirituality. In fact, I asked people back in Europe, if you're not already walking in the spirit, and maintaining some kind of spiritual walk, you know, we don't expect you to be Hudson Taylor, uh, don't come into the program. Men who come in the program carnal will probably graduate carnal, even with points. Uh, spiritual life is Jesus. It's not IT, it's not Lagos, it's not George Verwer, it's not exercises, it's Jesus Christ. And I'm sure there are some very beautiful Christ-like individuals back in your home countries, never been through intensive training, they may have been in the military, uh, they probably have had many, many other experiences in life. But we are, uh, admittedly, in a different situation. So, uh, it's no guarantee for spirituality, but for the man who is walking with the Lord, I believe it is a guarantee of growth. It is a growth program. It's a growth program. It's a stretching program. Now, most of your life, or a lot of your life, most of you are going to be on your own. You know, and that's that's fine. That's more or less the way it should be. You're, you're going to be free. You're going to make your own decisions. This is a unique experience, which, if done right, will prepare you for whatever avenue of life you go into. I think you know that this program is somewhat patterned after Outward Bound. Outward Bound is a proven method of making men and making leaders. Some companies invest thousands thousands of whatever kind of currency you think in and if you're Italian lira it's millions <laughs> to get their men through outward bound courses some of the best OM leaders we've ever had we only discovered in last year when we became interested in outward bound they had already been through it Keith Beckwith the initial pioneer of the work in Britain outward bound man Mike Evans outward bound man Outward Bound, by the way, started in Britain and spread to many, many other countries. And uh, Mike Light, Outward Bound man. A number of other people have been through Outward Bound. Now, we cannot do things that Outward Bound does. Outward Bound, you're, you know, mountain climbing and rivers and it's all out in the woods and it's short. It's short. It's three weeks, four weeks, a month. And it's all physical. But very much linked with your emotional, you see, and psychological and all the rest. So ours isn't the same, but they're, they're, a lot of the concepts are the same. And, of course, ours is very much based on building you up spiritually. I mean, reading the Word, memorizing verses, writing commentaries. I mean, this is not... This is in no way uh, to be compared with what you get in Outward, in outward Bound. But I think it's important as we begin to understand there's no quick remedy for spiritual ailments, it's no substitute for other things. Nor are we saying, you know, this is the way we, we should live all of our lives. I praise God that after going through intensive training last year, and I didn't do it 
as way as I, I should have because of my other few jobs I had, that my life has never been the same. My life has never been the same since going through this. The biggest thing, perhaps, that I can see outwardly is it started me in Arabics. Arabics is a fancy name for the type of exercises that increases your breathing. And scientifically, doctors will show you if you can increase your breathing, that means your intake of oxygen, you're going to sleep better, you're going to live better, you're going to walk better, your life is going to change. And I can give you a book of 250 pages just on that, on that subject. And uh, through getting involved in intensive training, I started running, something I have never wanted to do. Different people said, you ought to run. I had my little calisthenics program. You know, wiggle your arms, move your toes, do push-ups. Fine, that's enough for me, you know. Many times after that program, maybe one out of eight, I go back to bed. Anyway, uh, I started just running. And we started right outside the ship when we were in port. As we get more faith, we move on to the water. But uh, <laughs> we haven't yet. <laughs> Mind you, with a dumb laugh, because with a sea truck, I feel water skiing definitely should come in, but uh, I haven't talked to Miley about that. <laughs> Only for graduates, of course. <laughs> but um, that, that one thing alone has helped me uh, so much. Um, many other things that uh, I did in this program helped. As I, I worked on creating this program and what things we should do, I put in a lot of things that automatically I did as a young Christian, uh, led of God to launch out and to to do what we were doing in Mexico. You see, one of the great dangers in OM today, if not the biggest one, is that we, second generation leaders, one decade above you, are going to make it easy for you, therefore rob you of the chance to learn what we learn. When I launched out in 1957, nothing, almost nothing was done for me. I couldn't go to, brother, how do I get prayer partners? I mean, you know, there was no prayer that I had to do the prayer letter, the prayer partners keep the list, type the addresses, everything. And either I broke through and did that, and many times as a student at Moody Bible Institute, I worked 24 hours around the clock and went back to school. I can't even do that anymore, I don't know why. Maybe the Lord knows I don't need to do it anymore, because he's raised up men to help me. And that isn't his normal way to work, you know, work 24 hours. But I knew, either I broke through and got those letters out, and, and uh, did what I had to be done, because I had to go to school at the same time. Plus, part of this time I was also working. Or that was it. OM was folded up, closed down in the summer crusade. And one of the other crusades would go on. No, there was no other crusade. I was under tremendous pressure as a young man. I was only 18, 19. Now, the danger in OM today is that, man, so much is already done for you. Somebody else has got your vehicle for you. Somebody else hands you a car. Someone else takes your passport around and gets visas for you. Someone, I mean, almost come up to blow your nose. Here, you're on OM. Let me blow your nose. But this program is designed to crash through that. And, and I'm not going to help you very much get through this program. And Tony isn't either because he's in it. He's going to lead it. And he'll help to some degree. But he has instruction already that when someone comes to him, as often as possible, to ask a question how it can be done, the idea in OT IT is to throw it back on you. You show us how to do it, man. You show us how to do it. And uh, this is very important. Uh, uh, far more important in some ways than the outward things that we do are the, the process our mind is forced to go through. Figuring out how we're going to get this done in any one day. Someday you're going to be a married man with three children. Your wife is going to be complaining about this. She wants you to spend more time with her. The kids want to go out and play in the zoo. You've got a boss who's demanding you not only eight hours a day on the job. If you're an executive in the world, in the secular world, he's going to expect you to wine and dine big clients who fly in it, and, and all kinds of things. And you're going to find that life is rough. We get the OM who thinks life on OM is rough. Why? He's never lived anywhere else. Hardly. He's only 18. But the fact is, life is rough, and a lot don't make it through. Just, just living, just surviving with a wife and with kids and, and, and with a job and with all these other things. And I believe that a big part of this outward bound. IT type of training is to prepare people for secular life just as much as you know being a full time worker. Both both are, are important. Now, I've said a lot about uh, some of these things back at the conference, but it's good to have them in, in uh, remembrance. We don't want anybody to join, and it's, it's still not too late to back out. The program starts after this meeting. 
We don't want anybody to join who doesn't mean business. You know, we, we're, we're not lacking for men. We've got 15 men in this program, or 14, one or two coming in. I hear you. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're not interested in having girls IT unless girls really want, you know, just, you just want it, forget it, because you know, we're, we're, we're not pushing. But if like last year, there are a couple girls who really want this, they feel that this is going to do something for them. And I went later on when they got, they're producing five babies in a decade or whatever else they're doing. Uh, praise the Lord. We will reorganize the men's IT, let you work on it, and draft it up, because it has to be changed for girls. So we're not pushing you into it. There's plenty of jobs on this ship. Uh, there's plenty of other things to do. OM's got big scope. We want you to come in freely. See, so once you give your will in and join, uh, then you're in. But it's a liberty move. It's a liberty move. You have the liberty right now to come or not to come. And then after that, your liberty's gone. You've agreed to do something. That's maturity. Liberty without maturity equals confusion. You get a man who's crying out for liberty, doesn't have the maturity to use it properly, to discipline it. I mean, he just, he'll drive you and everybody else crazy. And so, you've got the liberty to choose this or not choose it. You can, you can go, the galleys needs people. The exhibition needs people. Uh, there are all kinds of jobs, and, and some of them, if you want, it, it definitely can be a lot easier. Now, one of the reasons IT is so good on the ship, ship probably changed a lot since uh, I was here last, and a lot of these things are rooted up and gone, <clears throat> I hope. But I found that there is a lot of liberty on this ship, because we as leaders cannot organize the lives of 130 people, 50 shore volunteers, plus carry out our own ministries, because God has called us to preach, God has called us to, to pray, God has called us to do a lot of things. And so we found that you can, if you want to, on the ship, get away with quite a bit. You know, you do your job and then you nick off into your cabin. You can't go running around the ship. I don't know what systems you maybe have bells and guns and get people out of the cabin. You can't go around looking at everybody in their cabin. And so the ship, there's more liberty than many other OM teams by the very fact there's too many people for us to handle. So if the individual doesn't discipline himself and take the initiative, he's going to really hinder himself being on the ship. And in the early days of the ship, I saw people go downhill. You can go downhill spiritually in the ship. Look at yourself. Because uh, you are on your own, and people cry out for liberty, oftentimes, long before they're mature enough to handle it. And the idea for this program, to some degree, is that it is a program for those of us that are honest enough to admit <laughs> You know, we really do lack a little maturity. At present, we, we need a little guidance. We need some goals. Now, in IT, some days will be very much planned for you. I, some of you will find those days easy. You're the kind that likes to be told exactly what to do. Other days, you'll be very much on your own. Those days are the ones that really will count. Because if you don't make use of those days when you've got more freedom, to get into the tapes, to get into the books, to get into the reading, to get into the Bible memory verses, you will not pass the course. Now, we are discussing the possibility of, of a demerit system. The Indian program had a demerit system. They put a little backbone, you know, when you get a little bit, uh, two months from now, really weak. And if we had a demerit system in which uh, you get a demerit for really flunking off, you know, you don't show up for, devo for devotions or for uh, exercises, you get a demerit, and that has to be worked off. Maybe run an extra mile, maybe swim uh, with your a rope tied to the fin of a whale. Some uh, some program that you know will uh, you won't particularly want to do. But we haven't decided on that yet. You can give your thoughts on it. But um, we, I think, the bigger backbone to determine that we're going to go forward is that we come into it voluntary. This is what we want. This is what we want. Now we had our little mountain. Uh, our little initiation. You all made it to the top of that lower peak, which uh, that qualifies you, and those of you who were there, to come on IT. Um, if you weren't there, well, you're still qualified. But um, it seems to me that there is a good spirit. Um, I think the best thing now is to go over this list. We have worked on this uh, 
Can you come up here so you can read into the microphone? We worked on this, even mathematically, I worked out the number of hours. Without question, this program can be completed. But it will take a lot of effort. Not just physical effort. This main crunch of this program is not physical. It is mental. It is mental. We're not interested in making Charles Atlases out of you. Uh, we haven't got the facilities for that. We'd like to get you into a thinking individual. No one's ever going to make a Charles Atlas out of Tony over here. Anyway. But uh, we're going to read through the various sections and then allow a moment for questions. First section, uh, evangelism and follow. This is men's goals. You girls, this will be duplicated soon. So um, you may not want to write it down. That's up to you because it will be duplicated. But let us quickly read it. There are five main sections in this intensive training program. The first one is evangelism and follow-up. And this includes 100,000 tracts and booklets distributed, 100 personal presentations of the gospel, 75 hours book selling in shops and from door to door, and 100 hours book selling on the streets, 50 open air meetings, 200 hours on exhibition work, 30 church meetings preaching or testifying, 200 follow-up letters, 25 hours church book tables, 50 towns entered, 50 hours on ship evangelism. That's film shows, coffee bar, children's programs. All right, does anybody want to ask anything? Uh, now, of course, you'll have questions. Uh, and you, a lot of your questions will be answered as you go along. But is there anything especially that comes to your mind? Is that every week? No, that is the total five-month... Uh, <laughs> Basically, you do have to figure that um, apart from your sleeping and your eating, that most of your day, say minus an hour, is, is used up. Now, you must not think of that as being eight hours work and think, oh well, others on the ship are working eight hours, I'm working 15. Because a lot of this is not work. It's study, it's, it's the whole purpose of your life as a Christian. Study, tapes, and all these other things. So don't think, oh boy, I'm working 14 hours and I tape. Everybody's else working only not because uh, that, that isn't the case. People pay a lot of money to go to college. And people pay a lot of money to go to Outward Bound. Because it is, you are receiving something. You are receiving. You will be receiving through this much more than you will be giving uh, to, to, to the ship. Though you will be giving as well. And that's the tremendous, wonderful thing about this program is that you're giving to the Lord and to the ship program and to world evangelism. At the same time, you're getting something that you need to build yourself up as, as a strong uh, leader. Other question on that? Evangelism and follow-up. We just make a remark about this uh, personal presentations that means that you have spoken to a man at least for 10 or 15 minutes it doesn't mean that you have to have presented the full plan of salvation uh, we don't want people necessarily to use that approach and everybody you know, gets stereotyped well I've got to get the four spiritual laws in I've got to tell them that the blood of Christ is the only thing that can save me but we want you to communicate if you communicate to a sinner for 15 minutes and bring forth something of Christ your testimony that we call well, a, a personal presentation. We'll have a session or even more on personal evangelism. There are tapes on the ship. Uh, Ray Lynch will be really setting the pace in open air meetings. Uh, church meetings only count now if you are actually doing something in the meeting. We don't want you to have to spend too much time sitting around in uh, church meetings. And uh, I think the rest is self-explanatory. Of course, if you go to a church meeting and you are in charge of the book table, then, of course, that comes under the category about book tables. So if you do get stuck in a meeting, you know, once you're not doing anything, man, get, the, get on the book table and, you know, do something. No, if you testify, if you testify and work the book table, of course, you know. There are a number of areas where you have double. And if you memorize a verse in between testifying and working the book table, then you're shooting three persons on stone. In this program, you can get six at a shot if you try hard. All right, let's go on to study. It's the second main uh, heading. On study, read the entire Bible through once and the New Testament twice. In any, any language. Any language. 
a commentary verse by verse on one book of the Bible, or if they're small, and two books, a hundred tapes taking notes or a summary, 25 videotapes taking notes, 50 lectures or special sessions, 3,000 pages of reading with a brief summary on each book, an intensive study of the leadership manual with an exam, and two memory verses per week. So we kept the memory verses down uh, to two a week. We thought of one a day, but with all the other things you're doing and with us in different degrees of memorizing power, we, we kept it limited. That can be in your own language, though you should be wanting to discipline yourself in the language that you're going to be using in evangelism, which generally is not going to be Dutch or Swedish or French, but it's going to be English. Of course, uh, you'll be seeing later on about Hindi. Where is that listed? Oh, no, we no, forgot no, that. No, no. In addition to these, uh, and, the, and the study comes identifying and locating 150 countries on the map and giving the, knowing the names of 25 heads of state and then learning 20 Hindi phrases also. Yes. There's a number of things we've added this year that we did not have last year, about at least 20 things all of which don't necessarily take a lot of time, but we feel are very, very essential for total development of a person's uh, uh, mind and, and general uh, knowledge. And if you learn, for example, these 20 phrases as soon as possible in Hindi, it will revolutionize your time in India. Revolutionize. I never, I never got higher than about 15 phrases, and that revolutionized the, the times that I've been in India. So that's something we really want to get into. Any question on that? Study. All right, physical fitness. Includes daily morning exercises, working out to 50 push-ups, run a six, or if you're heavyweight, a seven minute mile, 35 sit-ups in one minute, two 10 mile track treks, and one 40 mile trek, one three or four mile cross country race, and swimming one mile. Um, we have a lot of people exercising on the ship in these days, so the people in this program will have a separate exercise program. You're not to go into the general uh, exercise pool. We will meet on the poop deck when we're at sea and on shore when we're at port. And it will involve both calisthenics uh, to really build up our uh, strength and then running. Two different completely purposes in those kind of exercises. And um, Tony will uh, lead this I will be with you most of the time on that because it's something I do have time to do. It doesn't take much time, so I can uh, be with you on that. Any other question on the physical fitness? You won't be able to do the rest of the program unless your body is ready to cooperate. Now, I was just reading something this morning by Paul Tournier. Here's a brilliant, consider one of the most brilliant psychiatrists, psychologist, Christian, and he brings out how important it is also, in his own unique way of saying things, to, to make use of the body. The body is a good thing. And he, he shows how various forms of making use of the body in sports and exercises and other things is actually a therapy in itself. And this is something from uh, a man like Paul Tournier. All right, let's read the next section. The fourth section is on work. And this includes 150 hours with deck men or engineers or mechanics, 100 hours in the galley or dishes or cleaning, 50 hours driving or cycling, and in general, any job, anywhere, anytime. That is not a lot of work hours. It's not a lot of work hours. The main purpose of this program isn't just to get you working. Some of you have already worked a lot in your life, but it is part, a vital part. And um, we, uh, of course, expect people to really throw themselves into it and be an example. Uh, to the other members of the ship's crew who you will be working with, and this, of course, will give you the chance to get to know them and all the rest. Any question on the work? Frank Dietz is in charge of uh, sort of uh, work assignments on the ship when the, some head of a department, the whole ship is, as you know, divided in departments. This guy's running short of labor power. He's got some jobs to be done. They see Frank Dietz. Frank, in turn, will see Tony. People in IT, except for short, you know, tasks, somebody help, says, look, can you help me carry this bundle from here to there, cannot be directly recruited. And we had that last year. I take it that's true this year. People just can't come up and say, hey, work in my department for a day, you know. 
they have to go through the right channels. Usually they have their apartment to Frank, to Tony. If Frank is off, and they may go to Tony. But we don't want people just pinching you as if you were the sort of the, the labor pool. Uh, we're willing to work. That's what we want. But we want it done right. On the other hand, if somebody does something, don't jump down their throat. Just check with you. You say, look, you know, I've been asked to do this. Praise God. You know, I'm ready to do whatever you say. But what, what's the situation? And we will try to work things out. You must realize that uh, with the number of people we have and the number of volunteers that come on shore, it is not simple to organize all this. And so sometimes things will not go as smoothly as we would want. All right? Any other thought on this work? I'm going to go to all, all these um, shops. All this one station you have to go. You have to cover what it says here. You have to have at least 150 hours with deck engine or mechanics. That alone is three departments. It's mixed together. Some of you may have all of that in mechanics and nothing on deck. That generally wouldn't be the case, but it may be. And uh, the 100 hours is galley, dishes, or cleaning. Probably most of you will get all that in dishes. A little bit of galley. And then uh, the driving. Yeah? Can you classify the singing group as work? The singing group uh, can, can be fit in in terms of meetings. If you're singing in a meeting, that gets categorized at the meeting. An IT man in singing group would have to really get on the ball with the book tables, so he would get time off on the book tables. If he's singing on the ship, it can be counted under the, that category of uh, hours of ship evangelism. But if you are in the singing group, it will take a little bit extra effort, though we had, no, last year the singing group was one half IT people. <laughs> yeah. We are giving a member of the singing group last time. Will it not what? Well, like I say, the singing group last year, uh, half of the men on the on the singing group were IT people. Judd Lamus, Dennis, uh, I mean, Des Harper, who's now in, in Gujarat. It can fit in, but it takes initiative and takes takes hard work. About the driving, is it possible to teach driving? Uh, that's something I'll we'll have to t take up later. I can't answer that. I think it should be possible. The final main section is prayer and fellowship. This includes one hour of daily private devotions, all devotional periods, all nights of prayer to the end, 20 group fellowship sessions, three days of prayer alone with fasting, prayer partners up to 100, and for those who already reached 100, up to 200, correspond with 25 OMS in at least 10 fields, correspond with 25 other missionaries, and then speak to uh, at least, or know at least 50 uh, people on the ship and know at least two facts about their background. In 150 countries on the map. That's, yeah, that's what Oh, we've got that. Okay. Any question on that? <coughs> we had a session on that the last time, and we, we should do that again. <coughs> There was a memo given out at the conference in Europe on writing prayer letters, and uh, we will try to give, of course, some instruction on how to improve in the area of communication and writing letters. So what there's numbers. There's numbers that you have to reach of people you're corresponding with, 25 missionaries and 25 OMers. And Tony, I'm channeling through Tony a lot of addresses about other missionaries. So that he will help you get some name and addresses, but then you've also got to take the initiative. Uh, and, and you know mission societies, you can write to them, get the list of their missionaries. There's all kinds of things you can do in there if you give some thought to it. And then, of course, uh, this, just this last point. Then there are special projects. Everyone will have at least five special projects. And in general, everyone must be ready for anything at any time, especially extra prayer and fellowship meetings. And uh, to do all this, everyone must keep personal records of these things, and these will be on other sheets yeah. weekly. All right. We uh, will supply you with a, a sheet, this big paper, that, so that each day you can just tick off very easily what, you know, what's been done on that day. It takes you a couple of minutes, but it is a discipline. And part of this program is the discipline to keep the records, keep the records up. Uh, any other questions? Now, everybody, in, uh, or most people at least, in IT will be living in the dorm. You cannot 
count on sort of a regular little Bible school schedule. It's just completely different from that. If you want Bible school, you go to Bible school. This is not Bible school. So you will get a lot of the word if you do it properly. But we specialize in throwing wrenches into people's schedule. That's the way this kind of work is. You're at sea and you may just think you're getting on sort of a schedule, just learning how to sort of, you know, rest and boom, you go into port, everything changes. And interruptions, uh, change of schedule, no plan schedule, having to make use of your own time. Uh, for instance, you may come in the morning at 9 o'clock, 3 or 4, or given jobs, the rest said, look, rest of the morning, tape, study, whatever's on your mind, then it's up to you. And that's what that means that this afternoon, if you want to get into this program, as hard as it will be, somehow you'll, you'll get in orbit in one of these areas. You'll either get a cassette or you'll get reading or, or you'll do something as hard as it may emotionally be today when you're still, you still feel, you know, you're up in the air. Because this is what we're trying to teach people. Initiative and uh, flexibility, adaptability, redeeming the time. We're not going to redeem the time for you. You've got to redeem it. There's always something you can do. I have never been on this ship when there wasn't at least five things that I could do. Fortunately, quite a few of them I even wanted to do. Many times because of the job I have, I can't do the things I want to do. And so this is, this is you know, up to you to, from the time we leave here today, start moving. We, we don't want Operation Excuse. The devil will try to bring you all kinds of excuses why you can't do it. You can't listen to tapes now because you don't have a tape recorder. Well, that is a beautiful problem. You don't have a tape recorder. Can't you solve that problem? You don't think there's any, any solution to that problem? There's probably about 30 of them on the ship. That doesn't mean you still don't have a problem. How to get one and then, then you may not have electricity. You may not have batteries. I just hope you have to fall on your knees. Thank God. I don't even know how to get a tape recorder. Uh, come to the end of yourself. Then maybe the Lord will provide you with one. But uh, all kinds of little things come up. You're told to go out in literature evangelism. You can't find any literature. <laughs> and that's the idea. That's the idea. I'll, if I find it, I'll hide it. Because we want you to think. If you have to print tracks on the banana leaves, we want you to learn how to overcome the problems and get on with the job. Not come crawling back to George Miley who's got 188 things to do or anybody else saying, look, I can't do this because I can't find my pencil. <laughs> or will you help me? I've lost my trousers. <laughs> We want you to break through. We don't want people coming. I can't find a private place to study. Look, if we were out on one of those warships, if you think this is crowded, have you ever been on a submarine? I've been on a Dutch submarine, one of the top in the Dutch Navy. And I want to tell you, this thing is a palace. On a submarine, officers are sleeping in hammocks above engine, moving parts. And this, man, if you can't find a private little place here to listen to your recorder and put the earplug in or, or write your letter, especially when we get on shore because you can, you can go off, uh, then, you know, you're failing a program because this is what we want you to learn to do. Someday you may all get stuck on an aircraft carrier. Some of these aircraft carriers, 2,000 people living on one ship. Can you imagine? 2,000 people. Can you imagine one of the new recruits going to the, uh, the officer in the aircraft carrier and say, look, I can't find a private place for prayer. Or for study, you know, you, 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 you've got to make use. And you, if you learn to concentrate, you can learn how to study and do things even when there are noises going. You say, I can't do that. I'm not like that. That's just what we're after. We're after breaking through your psychological barriers. You're not, you know, if a man's 50 years of age and he tells me, I can't sleep unless I have a perfect environment, you know, I'll do everything I can to get in that environment. But if he's 19 or 25, I'll do everything to teach him how to overcome that problem. If, after all the effort you make, you feel you really do have a psychological or emotional hang-up in some area, you not only can come to Tony, you can come to me. I'll be more than happy to sit down and talk to you about your emotional problems. But let's, let's make an effort for quite a few weeks on that. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you don't make lots of mistakes in this program, you have failed. You fail. You're probably going to put your foot in it. You'll probably do something stupid concerning one of the officers. You'll probably break some dishes. You'll probably end up sleeping with too many pillows. Seems that you got some pillows today. 
Don't be afraid of making mistakes. And if someone chews you out, one of the officers chews you out, praise the Lord. Someone tells you off, wonderful. All part of the program. But don't shrink back because you're afraid you're going to make a mistake. Well, what will George Thorpe think? Look, I, I link with the, the ball droppers. My fellowship with is, 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 is close with the guys that are real flop outs, drop outs. I have trouble with the smoothies. I get, my guilt complexes react. So don't worry about making mistakes. You're not trying to please me. I may say, if you do something stupid, I may say something to you. One minute later, I generally forget. I may not even know who you were when I said it. Because I'm, uh, my, my, my problem has always been my tongue goes faster than my brain. And so, we're not running around to try to please everybody. We're afraid we're going to make a mistake so we don't launch out. Because, you know, that, you're never going to learn that way. You're never going to learn that way. Now, I don't know if there's anything assigned for this afternoon. I rather doubt it. You're free to try to screw your head on and decide whether you want to continue. A good few moments of prayer may help you somewhere. Uh, at times, Tony will be assigned a job that may only need a couple of men. He'll grab the first couple of IT guys he can find. Maybe clean the door. Maybe wash vehicles. I hate vehicles when they're not clean. There's all kinds of things that may have to be done. But with a large number, generally a good part of you often will have the time to get into the tapes, get in the books. Don't wait to the last month to do your Bible commentary. Don't put all those things off that look a little bit hard. Wait, start a new now. And uh, there's a good library down there. A really good library as far as I'm concerned. It's not the University of London, but there's plenty of good books. And uh, later on when we get to India, you'll be a lot in evangelism. So these times at sea, every hour counts to get that tape and the re- tapes and readings and other things. There'll probably be a program, if not tonight, tomorrow night, I guess. And videotapes can start going because yeah, we'll have programs. Program. So we will have programs especially to see every night. Sometimes two meetings a night. Videotapes, Bible study times. So uh, and see all this counts in their lectures. Yeah, yeah, and films too. Okay, let's close in prayer. I'd like to have a few minutes with the girls uh, now um, just to see what we're going to do about that side of things. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet together and we pray that this thing may go off with a cannon blast that hits the devil square between the eyes because, Lord, these things we're doing are not just things we do for the sake of doing most of this. really counts. It's real warfare. There's no trial runs. The devil's not taking a holiday so we can have a training program. It's a live war with live ammunition and we thank you for it. And though we feel weak and inadequate, and uh, we, we may have other emotional struggles today. We're looking to you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the end of this meeting concerning intensive training program.